All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this Acer Swift SF314-52 series, model N17P3. Okay, so this model actually is pretty difficult to get open. The clips are very strong, um, but once you get the clips open, then um, you'll be good to go. But anyways, you want to remove all the screws. You'll need a T5 um, for the bottom screws, and then you'll need a PH1 um, for the internal screws. You might need a PH0 as well, but um, I think PH1 will probably get everything out. So anyways, um, you'll remove the T5 screws. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, if your computer's not turning on and having like not charging at all or anything, there's this uh, CMOS reset button little hole. You can use the needle and you just poke the needle in there and then hold the button down. You'll feel it click. Hold it down for like 5-10 seconds and then see if that changes anything. If not, um, you will have to open it up and see if there's something wrong. Okay, so after you get all those screws out, what you want to do is the gap is very thin. So you will need a very thin tool. Plastic tools I don't think will work. You'll need like something metal. But anyways, there's a very thin um, little gap here. That's where the case meets the top. So you need to get the tool in there. You might not be able to get it with the tool, so you, I kind of pull it with my fingernail a little bit, so that way I can also get the tool in. And then once you do that, you kind of like insert the tool, and then you pull the tool towards the, um, the inside, actually. So you go along, and then you pull it towards the inside. So pulling it this way, actually you can kind of like go both ways until you feel it click. Um, if it doesn't come out, just keep going to the next side and then kind of work it. I kind of took it took it out once already so it's a little bit easier but you do have to just keep moving the tool along and then kind of prying it. Okay so when you get to the headphone jack side actually you can leave this side clipped um, because the headphone jack sticks out so you have to swing it out from from this side actually. Okay so again just insert the tool. If you feel it's like stuck there then you kind of just wiggle it forward and backwards like this. Okay should unclip all right again this case is really difficult to remove um the first time i did it it was very very hard to remove this okay once you get to like the ports and stuff on the side you want to be careful okay you don't want to um, pry in there and then damage those things so kind of just barely um stick the tool oh sorry just barely stick the tool there sorry and then um, move it around to see if you can get underneath. You will have to close the screen and then go to the back and then you can go in with the hinge. Again, it's very difficult to get the tool in but just go work your way around. Once you can get the back of one side up then it will actually let you pull the whole thing out. So this is, as you can see, it's very difficult. It's not really moving anywhere. So you might have to work your way around the other side. Um, Let's see here. So it's stuck really bad. Yeah, I'm going to have to like kind of help pull it while I'm prying it. So here we kind of got up like this corner. So as you can see, you can see actually inside the laptop now. Um, but yeah, it's still stuck pretty strong. Let me try and pry up a little of the other side. Okay did come up a little. Again, you can't really pry this side because this headphone jack is on the motherboard and it's attached to the top. Um, so if you try and yank this, it'll rip out the, the headphone jack. So don't try and lift from that side. You kind of have to work this. Okay. Yeah, it's very tough. So kind of just work with it, move it around. Come on. Jeez, there we go. Okay, so now we got the bottom part up. All right, then you can kind of just pull up on here and kind of wiggle it, and then the clips here will, the clips along the back will release, and then you kind of just lift it up that way. So, as I was saying, the headphone jack here. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the headphone jack here kind of sticks out. So when you put this back, you have to kind of put it at this angle and then close it on top, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so here, 
The charge part's kind of not a good design. They just use little plastic mounts hold it in place. So this one, when they plugged it, it shoved the charging port in. And then I had to add some glue and stuff to hold it to keep it pushed outwards. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, but first, let's remove the battery. So to disconnect the battery, I just use my two fingernails like this and kind of just wiggle the connector. Okay, just like that. Then what you do after you disconnect the battery, open up the screen, hold the power button for about 15 seconds. Um, this will drain any power inside so you don't accidentally damage anything. Um, you, there's still a chance you can damage stuff, so you still have to be careful, but the chance is a lot lower. Okay, this thing's really dusty. Let me clean that up. All right. All right, so now that you've done that, okay, um, let me show you, I guess, the stuff that more people would need to replace. The battery is AC14B7K, so if you need to replace the battery, there's that. The fan looks like it's just held in with two screws. Um, it's not attached to the heat sink. The heat sink moves freely. So you just remove those two screws and then you disconnect this just like the battery. Just wiggle the connector and then you'll be able to pull it out. All right, I don't want to take out stuff I don't need to. Um, I will take out the battery just so you can see what's underneath. Let's see here. Um, this computer seems to have two M.2 uh, SSD ports. Um, I don't know if they're PCIe NVMe or just M.2 SATA, but um, yeah, let's see. So we'll take out the battery. Um, I'm going to have to peel up. I don't want to damage that foam, so I'm going to try and remove that adhesive from the battery side. Okay, just like this. There we go. Then we can lift the battery out. Okay, so we got the battery out. Underneath the battery, um, let's see if oh, maybe I'll do a close up. So, underneath the battery, you got the keyboard connector here. To remove that, you just pull these little tabs forward, um, be gentle, and they'll just pop out. Once you pull that out, you can slide the cable out just like this. Okay. To put it back, you just line it back up, slide it back in, make sure it stays in while you push the little tabs back in, and then just make sure push those tabs back in. Okay. You kind of want to pull both at the same time because sometimes when you pull one tab, it'll make the other tab come out. All right, I'm not sure what this little cable, what's this going to? Is that a fingerprint sensor? Yeah. So there's a fingerprint reader cable here. Okay, then you got the um, trackpad cable here. To remove these, you just flip up this little latch and then you can lift up this cable and pull it out. There are little wings that get caught down here. So make sure you kind of lift it up. All right, you got the CMOS battery connector here. So you just do the same thing with the battery connector. You just grab it, keep wiggling it, and it'll pop out. You got the speaker connector here. The speaker connects to the other speaker. Oops, sorry. So the speaker connects to the other speaker with the wire along here, but they connect to the board right there. All right, all these ports are part of the motherboard. Um, it looks like a keyboard backlight cable here. Not 100% sure, but it looks like that's what it is. Um, then you got the wireless card here underneath this cable. Um, so this cable connects the S, uh, SD card slot and this USB port along with the LEDs. Um, yep, so you got the wireless antennas. If you want to see how to remove the wireless card or the wireless antennas, I have a lot of videos for that on almost every single computer repair, so please watch one of those if you need help with that. But the cable, you always want to lift from the tail. Don't try and pry it from the front, okay? Um, let's see, the RAM. Let's see if I can show you the RAM. There is a screw here holding this uh, RAM cover in place. Um, it looks like you do need a PH0, not a PH1 for this. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You need to switch to a PH0 screwdriver. And then to remove the RAM, it is held in place with little metal clips that hold it. So what you do is you get your fingernail or pry tool underneath the metal piece. And also make sure to hold down the motherboard. You don't want to flex the motherboard too much. Okay. And then just lift it up just like that. Pry it up from underneath. Okay. You don't want to use any metal tools because you can damage the board. So it's always good to use plastic or your fingernails because your fingernails won't damage anything. Okay, let's see. So these are all clips. I don't know if there's any other screws. Okay, there is another screw hidden underneath this plastic. So make sure to remove that one as well. All right. 
Now that you got both those screws out, hopefully you can just lift this whole piece out. Okay. I don't know if there's some more hidden screws. Oh, it is taped down to the heat sink it looks like, so you might have some trouble lifting it up. But let's see here. Is there any... Okay. Um, there's nothing even under here. <laughs> the RAM is not user replaceable, so... You actually can't even upgrade the RAM, it looks like. Yeah, so if you look underneath here, hopefully I can show this. Um, where is that? There we go. So you can see the RAM is soldered to the board. You can't upgrade it, so don't waste your time. The only thing you can do under here, I guess, is um, if you want to take the heatsink out and redo the thermal paste. But um, yeah, so there's nothing under there. So I opened it just so you don't have to. So hopefully that helps. Um, the only thing you can do with this, it looks like, is upgrade the SSDs. Um, and at least the nice thing is there's another slot here. I don't know if it's M.2 uh, um, SATA or PCIe NVMe, but um, you can upgrade it. So that's all you need to know. Um, so it looks like if you are taking this thing apart, yes, you only need PH1 because you don't need to remove this little cover because you can't do anything with it. All right, so let's put this back. Um, and then you got the um, DC jack that I mentioned earlier. On theirs, it broke. Um, if yours has the same issue, you can buy a replacement DC jack. Um, or if it's your DC jack isn't really broken, but it's more just it's not staying in place. The way you fix that, as you saw, I removed those two screws. After you remove the two screws, just uh, open the screen slightly. Try and keep your finger as close to the hinge as possible. You don't want to like twist the case. And then after you just lift it up a tiny bit, you can put it down. There'll be a gap here for you to grab underneath. And then just use your fingers underneath and pry it up. Okay, so the charge port's here. Normally you can just pull this charge port out. I put some um, hot glue in the little gap behind it. And then after that, I put hot glue in here and then push the thing in. So now this jack won't move anywhere. If it does break, I don't know how because they'd have to, I guess if they twist the cable and it cracks this piece, um, then you can replace it. I like hot glue because it doesn't hold too strong. So if I need to, I can just rip it out. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to this model, it looks like. Um, so let me check the SSD that's in there. When you put it back, be a little careful. Um, you do have to make sure that the little um, raised bits go in the right spot. So when you close this, just make sure to watch for that, okay? So I don't know if it's in camera, but let me see and make sure it's going in properly. Sometimes it helps to open the screen, but again, you have to kind of keep pressure close to, oops, close to the hinge. Okay. And then just line it up and then you can push the hinges back down. Okay. Don't pull on this side when you try and move the hinges when the whole cover is not on because it's not very um, sturdy without the cup, the bottom cover. All right, so usually whenever I take the hinge screws out, I like to use some um, thread locker to make sure that the screws hold in really strong. So I don't know if you can see, but oops. Yeah, I'm basically adding this red thread locker stuff onto the screw. You don't need too much. <clears throat> All right, and then just put the screw in. Okay. And the LCD cable is here. If you need to take that out, you just use, um, you just peel up the adhesive and then you can pull it back just like the battery connector using the wings. Okay. Again, if you do take out that connector, make sure that you did the battery drain because if you don't drain the battery first, you can cause um, the, the backlight circuit to get fried. Sometimes you can actually fry the, the video circuit Okay, I'm gonna add Loctite to, or thread locker to all of these, um, just so that I can make sure that they don't come loose in the future. Okay, just like this. Okay. 
So if you're curious um, what type of uh, M.2 drives it supports, um, you can probably find it on Google or something. Um, usually I don't look up this kind of information. Um, I'm trying to get people to learn how to kind of think for themselves, look things up rather than just ask all the questions to me. I mean, if, if I get like everybody that's subscribed to me asking a question, or even, I mean, you, a lot of times the people that aren't even subscribed to me will ask questions. It's really hard to keep up with, so um, please try and um, learn for yourself. If there's information I left out, um, try and help out, um, post it on. I'll definitely comment and heart your video, or heart your comment. Uh, so that way other people will learn from that um, because I don't really have time to go and research every single computer I work on. Um, this is a NVMe PCIe, so it's an Intel SSD. Um, so if you do um, want, this one is definitely PCIe NVMe. So this side, I don't know, a lot of computers, unless they're like expensive, will only have one PCIe NVMe um, capable slot. So I kind of have a feeling that, oh, it looks like you don't even have to take the um, this piece off. Um, but yeah, so I have a feeling that this other slot is uh, SATA only. Um, but if you find otherwise online, um, again, just post it. Um, I'll definitely heart your comment, and that'll help other people. So, yeah. Okay, so put this here. Reattach that piece. Okay, now we just put the battery back on. All right. So take the battery, just slide the bottom part in first. There are little um, parts that stick out that need to go in a slot. Okay, oh, and if you want, make sure you can put the adhesive back on top. It's not really important, but yeah, I like to leave things the way I found them. Right, reconnect the battery just like this. Try and pull the battery straight in. You don't want to put it at an angle and then risk damaging the computer. So before the charge light was having issues turning on. So now if I plug this in, you can see it turned blue right away. So it's actually charging, okay? And if after you do that and it still doesn't charge, you most likely have to replace the charge port, okay? Um, it doesn't look too difficult to replace. The only thing is removing this cover is kind of a pain. Okay, so don't forget to put back in the screws for the battery. And be careful if you put any pressure on these components because they are raised slightly. You don't want to end up damaging those. Okay, so there we go. So we got everything back in place. And then we just put the cover back on. Again, remember that for this side, let me see if I can actually show it, um, but this headphone jack, you have to put it at an angle. It's kind of tricky. So put it at an angle like this. Make sure that the headphone jack stays in and then keep pressure there so that the headphone jack stays um, in the slot and then you can close it down, okay? After you do that, you can just smash all the clips back in place. Okay, just go back around, make sure everything clips in, and that's it. Put the screws back in and you're good to go. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. It'll also help others find this video and help them with their computer. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, I am running a contest for some Apple AirPods Pro. But if I don't see much um, interest and not many people commenting on that um, community post, um, then I will actually um, take down the contest. So please, um, if you're interested, write a comment at least and tell me that you're planning on submitting a video. And thank you for watching. Bye.